Hey there, in this video we are going to look at factoring by GCF. So we talked about two types of factoring in the last video, factoring by GCF and then factoring quadratics, which we'll break down even more next unit. But with um, GCF, again that means greatest common factor, the greatest common factor is the largest integer that each term in a polynomial is divisible by. You can also have variables as part of your GCF. So the GCF between numbers is the largest number, largest integer um, that can be divided into it. But then also if each term has the same variable, not necessarily the same exponent on the variable, but if all of the terms in that expression have the same variable, then that is going to be part of your GCF as well. So let's go ahead and look at two examples. So the first example, we see 7x to the fourth minus 9x squared. So the GCF, it, I always start by looking at the numbers, the coefficients in front of uh, the variables, if there are variables, or if it's just a number, then that's a constant. So looking at that. But if I look at those numbers in front, 7 and 9 do not have any common factors other than 1. And if you're not sure about it, you can always think through. Um, I start with the biggest number. So if you think about the factors of 9, 1 and 9 and 3 and 3. So 1 and 9 and 3 essentially are the factors of 9. None of those except for 1 go into 7 as well. So there's not going to be a um, number, an integer that divides into seven and nine other than one. So then we move on and we look at our x to the fourth and x squared. So because there is an x in each of these terms, um, we can take out, uh, divide out x to some power. So it's always going to be the lowest power. And if you remember, we can go ahead and write out x to the fourth is x times x times x times x, x squared is x times x. And if I am um, trying to figure out what's the greatest a number of x's that I can pull out of each term if I have to take the same from each term. I'm going to see that I can take out 2 here and I can take out 2 here. So x to the second power, x times x. So if I can do that in each of those, that becomes my GCF, x to the second power. All right, and then we'll talk in a little bit how do we actually factor with GCF. Um, right now, I just want you to find the GCF. So x squared is your GCF between these two terms. Now on number two, we have 8x cubed plus 4x squared plus 2x plus 16. And if you look at the four numbers that are here, we see 8, 4, 2, and 16. And with those, um, we have to consider that they all are even. So because they're all even, we can at least divide by two. And because one of them is two, we can't divide by anything more than that. So two is going to be part of our GCF. And then we want to go ahead and see, okay, each of these four terms, do they all have an X in the, each term? So X to the third, we have X times X times X, X squared, X, and then we just have a constant. So this one does not have any X's. So I cannot take an X out with my GCF, my greatest common factor, because if I did, I wouldn't have an X to take out of this term right here. And we have to take the same thing out, divide the same thing out each time. So two is actually going to be our GCF here. Now, sometimes um, we see a GCF where it has both of these, um, and we'll see that here in a minute where it has a number and a variable in the GCF. So now let's go ahead and do what we just did where we find a GCF. So our first step to factoring with the GCF is to find or determine the greatest common factor. And then we are going to go through a process where we put that GCF on the outside of parentheses. And then to figure out what goes on the inside of the parentheses, we go ahead and divide by the GCF. So we divide each term by the GCF, and then we can always check our answers by distributing. So distributing will allow us to check to see if that worked. So let's take a look at some examples. So first thing I want to do is find the GCF of these four terms. So looking at the numbers in front, the coefficients, we have 4, 2, 16, and 50. Now again, all of these are even. They end with an even number um, at the end of the number. So that tells us that we can at least divide by two. And because one of them is a two, two is the highest number we can divide by. 
Now, this time we also see that each term has an x in it, or x squared, or x cubed, or x to the fourth, but it has a, a base of an x. So if we look at that, we have x to the fourth, we have x to the third, we have x squared, and we have x. So the most number of x's we can take out of all four terms would be the lowest power, which is going to be x to the first power, or in other words, just x. So our GCF is 2x. Once we figure out our GCF, we go ahead and write that GCF in front of a set of parentheses. Now there are four terms here, so I'm going to make a set of parentheses that appear to be big enough to put four terms. I can always erase and rewrite if needed. So now what we do is we divide each of these four terms by the greatest common factor. So we're going to divide each of them by 2x. And we are going to use that to figure out what goes in the parentheses. So we will use our exponent rules. Um, so 4x to the fourth power over 2x. When we do that, we do 4 divided by 2. And that's going to go right here at the beginning of our parentheses. We get 2 x to the fourth over x to the first, we subtract those exponents and get x to the third power. Next, we have plus 2x cubed. So this is going to be plus. 2 divided by 2 is 1. x to the third divided by x to the first, we get x to the second power. And because this is 1x to the second, technically you could get rid of that 1 there if you want to. And we have plus 16x squared divided by 2x. So we can take 16 divided by 2 and we get 8. And x squared divided by x to the first power, we get x. Then we end with plus 50x divided by 2x. So plus 50 or positive 50 divided by 2 is positive 25. And then we have x divided by x. Now, both of these have an exponent of 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. You typically don't write x to the 0 power. That is really just 1. 25 times 1 is just 25. So we can think of the x over x um, simplifying to 1 or canceling out, however you want to look at that. So we end up with 2x times 2x cubed plus x squared plus 8x plus 25. And if you um, have time or aren't as confident, you can always check your answer by distributing that GCF back out. So if I wanted to check my answer, if I distributed out 2x times 2x cubed gives me 4x to the fourth power. Multiply 2x times x squared, you get plus 2x cubed. Then plus 16x squared plus 50x. So that tells me, yes, I am correct. I got the correct answer. So my final answer is this when I factor out a GCF. So now looking at number two, this one's a little more complicated. So we see some fractions in here um, and there are a couple ways that we can look at this. I am actually going to look at each individual base separately. So I'm going to look at the y's first and then I'll look at my x's And then I'll look at the numbers in the denominator next. So starting with um, our three terms, first of all, I'm going to point that out. We have three terms. And starting with that first term, the first variable, y squared. So y squared, y cubed, and y to the seventh. Remember, our GCF of variables is going to be the lowest power. So y squared is going to be part of our GCF. Then looking at our x to the fourth x and x squared. x to the first power, or just x, is our lowest power. So that is actually our greatest common factor. So x to the first power is going to be part of our GCF. And then in the denominator, we have 2, 4, and 12. So 2, 4, and 12 are all even. They are all divisible by 2. So in the denominator, 2 is our GCF. So when we have fractions like this, we can look at each part individually. And um, because there's y's in all of them, x's in all of them, and then even numbers in the denominator, um, we can look at those separately and see that our GCF is going to be y squared, x, all over 2. Now, to do our factoring by GCF, it's going to be just like we did over here. So I'm going to look at it piece by piece. So we're going to start by putting y squared x over 2 in front of a set of parentheses. And that set of parentheses is going to have three terms in it because that's what we started with. 
Now, looking at this, instead of writing out divided by another fraction, we typically don't look at it that way. We usually don't like to divide by fractions. Really, that's multiplying by the reciprocal. So what we are going to look at is look at each part separately, just like we did um, before to figure out the GCF. So look at your y's. So in this first term, y squared divided by y squared. So if you just look at that part, y squared divided by itself is going to be 1. So I'm going to start with the 1 here. Then we have x to the 4th divided by x to the first power. x to the 4th minus x to the first power is going to be x to the third power. And then in the denominator, we have 2 divided by 2, which is going to be 1. Now, if I put over 1, I don't really need to do that, just like I don't really need the 1 in front. So 1x cubed over 1 is just x cubed. So this first term, when I divide it by the GCF, I get x cubed. So now let's go ahead and look at our second term. So again, break it down. Look at the y's, the x's, and the constants on the bottom separately. So y cubed divided by y squared right here. Subtract the exponents and you get y to the first power. So plus y. Then we have x over x. x to the first over x to the first or x divided by itself gives you 1. So I don't need to write the 1 because this is really y times 1. y times 1 is just y. So I'm just going to leave that y. And then we have this 4 divided by 2. And that is in the denominator spot, so it's going to stay in the denominator. But this time we do have to write it because it's not just 1. 4 divided by 2 is 2. So this is going to be y over 2. Then we move on to the third term. Plus y to the 7th divided by y squared is going to be 7 minus 2 gives us 5. So y to the 5th power. And then we have x squared divided by x. Subtract the exponents and you get x to the first power, just x. And then we have 12 divided by 2. 12 divided by 2 is 6, so that goes in our denominator. y to the 5th times x over 6 is our third term when we divide out that GCF. So again, if you wanted to, you could multiply these back out. You would add the exponents when you multiply, and you would end up back at your original um, expression. So now we're going to take a look at how we find a GCF when there is a negative exponent. It really is going to work the same way. Um, the only difference is that it is going to um, have a negative exponent as part of our GCF. So let's take a look at number one. When it says factor out the GCF, that means the greatest common factor. So we look at each term and we ask ourselves, what is the common factor here? There is no number that um, we can divide each term by other than the number one. But if we look at the bases, we have an x in the first term and we have an x and a y in the second term. So the only variable that shows up in, in each term is x. So x is definitely going to be part of the GCF and then we need to figure out what the exponent on that is. So if you look at the base of x and its exponent in each term, the lowest exponent is going to be that GCF exponent. So negative three is the lower of the two. So x to the negative third power, and then we ask ourselves what's left over when we divide each of these terms by the GCF. So if we do x to the negative third divided by x to the negative third, that'll go here, plus in the middle, because we just bring down that plus sign, and then we have uh, the second term, we're going to divide by x to the negative third, and that value will go here. So let's go ahead and divide each of those. So if I have x to the negative third divided by x to the negative third, I am going to use the quotient rule. And to use the quotient rule, we just subtract the exponents, top minus the bottom. So that's going to be negative 3 minus negative 3. And that becomes negative 3 plus 3, which is really 0. So our answer here would be x to the 0 power. But anything to the 0 power, remember, is just 1. So 1 is going to go right here from dividing x to the negative third divided by x to the negative third. You can also get that quicker if you recognize anything divided by itself is going to be 1. So for example, 7 divided by 7 is 1, or negative 22 divided by negative 22 is 1. So x to the negative third divided by itself, the exact same base and exponent, is going to also be 1. So that is a quicker way you can do that as well. And then the second um, term right here, we have y to the fourth power times x to the fourth power divided by x to the negative third. So if I write that out over here and simplify that, 
we go ahead and notice that um, we have the same base here and here. The y to the fourth is going to still be there. And then we need to simplify this part right here. So to simplify x to the fourth over x to the third, we do four minus, and then the bottom exponent negative three, which is really four plus three, which is really seven. So we get x to the seventh power there. So y to the fourth, x to the seventh, that is our second term in the leftover part in the um, parentheses. So our answer when we factor out x to the negative third is x to the negative third times one plus y to the fourth x to the seventh. Now let's take a look at number two. So on number two, we have two terms again, and we see that x is the repeated base again, x to the negative second and x to the fourth power. And so we know that x is going to be part of our GCF, and then we look at our exponents to determine what exponent will be on it. It's the lower of the two, which would be negative two. So we go ahead and divide out x to the negative second in each of those terms. And then whatever's less left over goes in the parentheses here and here. And then we have addition in between. So x to the negative second over x to the negative second is one, because anything divided by itself is one, or you can go through the process of doing negative two the top exponent minus the bottom, and that would be negative two plus two, which is really zero. So that's x to the zero, which is one. And then the second one, x to the fourth, um, oh, and I'm sorry, backtrack for a second. We've got a y on that one as well. So we see x to the negative second divided by x to the negative second, and we're gonna bring that y down with that one. And we'll talk about that more in just a minute. Um, and then we have x to the fourth over x to the negative second. So x to the fourth over x to the negative second. We go ahead and subtract four minus negative two. That's the top exponent minus the bottom, which is really four plus two, which is six. So that's going to be x to the sixth power right here. So looking at that first term, we can leave a one there or we can take it without the one and just have a y there. Either way is fine. Um, but typically you don't see the one there, so usually you'll see it like this. x to the negative second times y plus x to the sixth power. That would be your answer. So in summary, we have um, GCFs that we worked with, and remember that is the greatest common factor. So if um, we see an expression and all of the coefficients are divisible by the same integer, that can be part of the GCF. And then remember, we can also look at the variable. And if there's the same variable in every single term, um, no matter the degree or the exponent on that variable, we can um, include that variable as part of the GCF. Okay, and then remember our steps for factoring by GCF, figure out the GCF first, then put it on the outside of the parentheses. So we put our GCF in front of the parentheses. And then what we um, do to figure out what goes in the parentheses is divide by the GCF to figure out what goes in here in the parentheses. And then remember, you can always distribute that GCF back out to all of the terms in the parentheses to figure out, did I get it right or do I need to make an edit?